I don't know if I'm stupid, <laughs> but I, I was a bit confused. I had to look it up. Hi there, I hope you're doing well. I have decided to film a little reading vlog this weekend. It is currently the 1st of March and it is snowing outside. <laughs> Thank you, global warming. I want to do a reading vlog because I want to redeem myself from the last reading vlog I did, which didn't go so well. I didn't read any books that I ended up loving, but I started Boy Parts by... What is the author's name? I'll update later what the author's name is. Eliza something, I think. I started Boy Parts last night and I've heard really good things about this book and I'm really enjoying it so far. I think, fingers crossed, it might be my first five star read of the year. Possibly, maybe that's what I'm hoping for. That's what it's feeling like right now. I'm about 17% through. I am gonna leave telling you about it until I'm a bit further in. But yes, I'm going to be reading that in this vlog and hopefully another book because I've not got much planned this weekend so hopefully a lot can be done reading wise. The exciting thing that is happening this weekend is tonight me and Alex are going to see Dune part 2 which we are very very excited for. We might get a Nando's as well beforehand as is becoming tradition in any video I do. <laughs> on this channel apparently. We loved the first film so we are so excited for this one. I'm a big Timothy H. Chalamet fan and a Florence Pugh fan and a Zendaya fan and I like Austin Butler. <laughs> but yeah that's the big exciting thing we're doing but apart from that I think it'll all be reading. Good morning, it is Saturday and we woke up to snow this morning, which was so exciting for Sienna, especially she had a great time on her morning walk. We went to see Dune part two last night and it was incredible, better than the first one and we loved the first one, but this one was just like so action packed. I think because the first one sets up the world so much and sets up the politics and who Paul is. The first one kind of gets Paul to where he needs to be and then in this one it was just action scene after action scene and it was so good. All of the action scenes were incredible. The performances were so incredible. It was definitely one that was made to be seen in the cinema. We loved it. I was thinking while watching it, I think th this is probably the film series that has come closest to The Lord of the Rings in terms of grandeur and scope of it all. I don't know if anything will ever beat Lord of the Rings though. But yeah, this was absolutely incredible. It could be the best film of the year and it's only just March. So exciting. We woke up quite early this morning so I read a bit more of Boy Parts by Eliza Clark. Let's double check that. Yes, by Eliza Clark. Let me talk to you a bit about it. This book is from the perspective of a woman who works in a bar but her passion and main career drive is photography, specifically fetish photography. She takes photographs of men that she scouts just around the city that she's in who aren't traditionally attractive but have interesting faces and she takes photos of them in erotic scenarios I guess. And it is so good so far. I am 
37% through, so I'm quite a good chunk of the way through now. From what I can gather from how far I am through, the book is split into chapters that are named after a man that features in the chapter. Where I'm at now though, it's not like each chapter focuses on the act of her taking pictures of each man, which is what I thought it was going to be like, but the pictures are a big part of their relationship. So for example, in a chapter I've just read she and her two friends go to a party hosted by a guy named Will who she has taken pictures of. So we don't actually see the scene where the pictures are being taken, we see their relationship after the fact. And then we've also got little chapters scattered throughout so far that are from her friend's secret blog where she posts about how she's in love with our protagonist. They had a little bit of a fling back in college and her best friend is still in love with her and I'm getting the impression that the protagonist likes the attention and is stringing her along. The protagonist is not very likeable. <laughs> at all. I don't think she's meant to be, but she's clearly very troubled. She's experienced some trauma, which we've learned about, and it's clearly had an impact on how she approaches life. I'm just really enjoying it. I'm still quite confident this could be a five-star read. I just really like the prose. I like being inside this character's head because it's really dark, but also funny, but also the things she's saying which are funny are also really not okay as well. She's not nice to her friends. She's not nice to the men that she's photographing. I was about to say she's not really nice to herself either, but she's just so completely in her art that I think she just that is all she thinks about. I'm just speeding through it though. I think I'll probably finish this today and be able to start a new book because it's just so fast paced and the writing is so delicious. I just, it's the kind of writing where you just want to keep absorbing it and keep absorbing it and keep going forward. So I'm really enjoying that. So I'll be reading for the rest of the day because, because it's a snow day, we were going to go to the shop and do a food shop today, but I don't really want to go out on the road. So I think we're just going to scavenge in our kitchen to try and make a meal up from whatever we have and then hopefully go to the shop tomorrow instead. I, the only other things we have to do really is we'll take Sienna on another walk this afternoon and I'm just doing washing. Apart from that I'm just going to read and I'm having a grand old time with it. So I finished Boy Parts yesterday, it is a new day. I did film my immediate reaction after I finished Boy Parts, but I think I was a bit incoherent and wasn't articulating myself very well. So I'm gonna do it again. If you haven't read this book, and you're thinking about reading it, I would encourage you to check trigger warnings before going into it, definitely, just to be safe, because it is quite a disturbing book we're in the heads of a really kind of twisted character and just some of the topics that are explored in it are quite heavy. So just try and know what you're getting into. I loved it. I gave it a five stars. Thank God, my first five star read of 2024. I just really, really liked Eliza Clark's writing style. I finished this book so quickly, I just couldn't stop reading it and I was just so engrossed in this character's head and how twisted she was. I had to read American Psycho in uni and I think an interesting comparison can be made between Boy Parts and American Psycho but like American Psycho very much male gazy and Boy Parts very much female gazy but it has that kind of um, disturbing quality to it. I think American Psycho was actually referenced at one point in the book. That's the thing that I thought was really interesting. I am not usually a big fan of when like modern pop culture references are made in books because I think sometimes it can feel 
a bit forced and can take me out of the book a bit and I think it's a really easy way to date a book as well but there's so many references to like modern pop culture and like the time that this book is set in place throughout this book but it never took me out of it it only engrossed me more like there's quite a few references to the Kardashians but the way they were included felt so natural with the way that Clark has like characterized our protagonist I loved the last maybe 20% of this book a lot. Things just started to get even weirder being in this character's head and it was like you were in her head as she, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but you are in this character's head as she's kind of descending into this manic madness where she's not sure what's real and what's not real. And I thought it was just written so viscerally and so well. I just loved it. I think Eliza Clark just has such a unique writing voice and I just really, really enjoyed it. It's quite twisted though, so like I said, just beware. <laughs> It's a bit twisted. I liked it so much though that when I finished it last night I decided that the next book I would read and the other book that I'm gonna include in this vlog is another one by Eliza Clark. This was published last year and it's Penance and I'll read the description for you. I realised I didn't really read the description for Boy Parts and I just kind of described it myself but I think it'll be a bit clearer if I just read the blurb for this book. It's been nearly a decade since the horrifying murder of 16 year old Joan Wilson rocked Crow on Sea and the events of that terrible night are now being published for the first time. That story is Penance, a dizzying feat of masterful storytelling where Eliza Clark manoeuvres us through accounts from the inhabitants of this small seaside town. Placing us in the capable hands of journalist Alex Z. Carelli, Clark allows him to construct what he claims is the definitive account of the murder and what led up to it. Built on hours of interviews with witnesses and family members, painstaking historical research and most notably correspondence with the killers themselves the result is a riveting snapshot of lives rocked by tragedy and a town left in turmoil. The only question is how much of it is true. I started reading this last night and about maybe 5% in I was like is this based on a true murder that happened or is this completely fictional? So I had to google it because it was just driving me mad. I just I was like I need to know so I googled it and it is a completely fictional murder but the way Eliza Clark is writing it it's She's writing it as though this, she's based it off something that really happened, but she's placing us in the perspective of a journalist who is writing a book about this and this is the book that was published. That's what confused me the most because at the start of the book there's like this disclaimer where it's like this book was taken off shelves when it was first published in 2020 or whatever because of accusations that I wasn't giving a true picture of events. The way that was written at the start of the book really made me, I was, I was like unsure whether that was part of the book, like the book had started and this was fictional or whether this was the disclaimer before this book. I don't know if I'm stupid. <laughs> but I, I I was a bit confused I had to look it up so it is completely fictional but this whole book is constructed to make you feel as though this is a real thing that happened and the book you're reading is a book that documents the events that happened and I'm really enjoying it so far so how far am I in I'm about 20% through I read some last night and I've read some this morning and I'm 20% through and I've got nothing else planned for the rest of the day so I think I'm just gonna read all day and probably finish it tonight and then I'll end this vlog tomorrow with my my thoughts on penance but I am loving it so far. The way it's split up just now we start with the overview of the crime that happened and then I think the book is split into focusing on the three girls who murdered this other girl. So right now I'm reading about the first girl who's called Girl A, Angelica I think her name is, and that's a whole section itself split into different parts. But within that section you focus in on different um, parts of her life, like when she was younger, we've got an interview with her dad and before that. So the the section I read last night focused a bit more on the victim and gave some insight on who the victim was and had an interview with her mum. So I think that's how the book's going to proceed forward. We're going to get girl A first, which I'm in the middle of, and then girl B and then get girl C. And then interspersed between these sections, I think um, we've got snippets from podcasts, true crime podcasts, which aired in this world talking about this crime that happened in really crass and insensitive ways, which is interesting. 
it's making me think about like how I consume true crime stuff because I quite like a true crime podcast and everything but I obviously know and I've heard the discourse surrounding like how ethical true crime podcasts and true crime youtubers and even like true crime documentaries are because there's a horrifically big community online who kind of feels like they idolize murderers in a way and with the hype around true crime now the line between like idolizing the murderers and being really insensitive to the victims has become way more blurry and I've been aware of this discourse for a while and it's something that I like to be aware of because I do consume true crime documentaries and I do listen to true crime podcasts. I used to listen to My Favourite Murder all the time but I know that like specifically My Favourite Murder has got a lot of criticism for kind of profiting off these horrific things that have been done to people and the horrible effects it has on victims families like having to relive this trauma so yeah I'm very aware of all this discourse so I'm really enjoying the inclusion of that in this book I think it's going to give me some important insights into how we have kind of sensationalized true crime as a genre even though these are real events that have torn lives apart so I'm really enjoying that aspect of it I'm really enjoying it all like like I said, because I like true crime, it's just hooked me in so much, even though it's a fictional true crime, but it's written in this true crime format, which I love. And is really just like, it's a, a, it's a wee bit meta because I feel like Eliza Clark is trying to comment on this discourse surrounding like the ethics of true crime and profiting off of other people's trauma. But she's doing it in a way where she's created a true crime murder and a true crime novel documenting this murder. It's making me question the ethics of it at the same time as me really enjoying reading a book in that format. So it's kind of just like the thoughts and feelings are very at odds with each other. I don't know if that makes sense. Maybe it'll be clearer once I finish the book how I feel about that. I think it's succeeding at what it's trying to do in making me look at myself and how I'm consuming this stuff. So I'll read this for the rest of the day. I did our weekly shop this morning and I went and had a bath. I've not eaten today though, so I need to have some lunch because otherwise I'm going to get hangry and it'll be taken out on Alex. <laughs> for Alex. He's the victim of my wrath when I'm hungry. I think today's just going to be a chill, lazy day with Alex. We'll watch some more Bridgerton tonight with dinner. I don't know what we'll have for dinner tonight. Monday the weekend is over and I finished Penance this morning. I loved it. I was another five star read. We've really gone from a slow 2024 star and skyrocketed <laughs> really quickly. I loved this even more than Boy Parts. I think maybe it's because I have an interest in true crime anyway. I kind of have an understanding of the discourse and debate surrounding true crime and it's e the ethics of how people interact with true crime. So it really sparked a lot of debate within my mind while I was reading about what I was reading and what Eliza Clark was trying to say about what she was writing. It really felt like everything included was a real conscious decision made by the author to say something about people who consume true crime for entertainment. And I think doing it through creating a fictional author who is surrounded in controversy from something in his past and who he himself is commenting on true crime being produced for entertainment rather than to inform whilst at the same time he is writing a book to entertain very clearly. And this comes under the spotlight very much so at the end of the book. I really don't want to spoil anything about the book but it's hard not to talk about how I feel about the book without kind of talking about where it kind of goes. I feel like Eliza Clark went into this book with the goal of sparking a debate around the ethics of true crime and to highlight people's implicity in 
consuming it as entertainment and I think she achieved that perfectly. I don't recommend doing what I did and reading boy parts and penance one after the other because once I had a great weekend reading some great books I've come into Monday in kind of like I don't want to say a bad mood but kind of like a downer. I woke up this morning and had to do some stuff and I was just like because I think because I'd read so much so many dark things in such a short space of time I just kind of feel a bit heavy <laughs> which doesn't bode well for whenever I read A Little Life which has been on my shelf for a year now and I just keep putting it off because I don't know when the right time to read it is and I just scared and this weekend has kind of proven to me that maybe now it's not the right time. I think I need to go and read something lighthearted now. That being said, I can't wait to see what Eliza Clark comes out next. Those books were incredible. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you've had a nice time coming along with me on this lazy weekend. I hope you have an amazing upcoming week and I will see you in the next one. Bye! <laughs>